In the last three episodes, we introduced the central ideas of biohistory. The concept of C helped us understand economic development and V, the essence of the warrior culture. The civilization cycle provides a model that helps explain why the Roman Empire collapsed and also what the future may hold for our own society. However, while this can help us understand the development of civilization in a broad sense, it doesn't account for the periods of chaos and upheaval that disrupt the flow of history. Even when a civilization is emerging, population levels can fluctuate enormously. Nations can unite under strong governments or collapse into feudal anarchy. The path of civilization is also scarred with mass conflicts. These are not simply wars involving professional soldiers, but the mobilization of entire populations in a frenzy of conquest. What's curious is that throughout history, these phenomena tend to occur with striking regularity. In this episode, we're going to look at a completely new aspect of biohistory, an echo of our ancient mammalian past and the missing link in our understanding of civilization. Looking back from the 21st century, it's hard to imagine the collective insanity that led the nations of Europe into the First World War. After a hundred years of relative peace and with seemingly little justification, millions of young men charged into battle and gunned each other down in the quest for national supremacy. So what caused this to happen? Why would the behavior of an entire population change so dramatically in such a short space of time? Once again, clues can be found by looking at the behavior of animals in the wild. Lemmings are small rodents that inhabit the frigid subarctic regions of Eurasia and North America. In addition to sub-zero temperatures and uncertain food supplies, lemmings also suffer from fierce predation. In order to help them survive this environment, every three to four years, lemmings go through a dramatic cycle of population growth and migration. In the peak years, they multiply rapidly, grouping together and then surging out in vast numbers to find new territory. They also behave differently, growing bolder and becoming much less fearful of predators. To lemmings in this phase, the ocean is simply another body of water that must be crossed, giving rise to popular misconceptions. However, after a time, the biological urges that drive lemming migrations begin to reverse. After their wave of expansion, lemming fertility drops and they become more prone to disease. They also spread out and become increasingly timid, denying predators a consistent food source. This means that when lemming numbers once again increase, populations of slower breeding predators remain low for some time, allowing lemmings to spread out rapidly and colonize new territory. While the relationship between lemmings and their predators may provide some explanation for their changing population numbers, the biological driving force behind the dramatic changes of behavior still remains a mystery. These patterns are very different to C and V, which can be seen as direct responses to the environment. They can also be passed on to children through the epigenome. Lemming cycles, on the other hand, seem to be independent of the environment forming a consistent pattern of behavior over many generations. Lemmings are not the only animals to display this cycling behavior. Larger animals, such as muskrats, hares, and even moose, also appear to cycle, although the duration of theirs are typically longer in line with their rate of reproduction. Now here's the interesting thing. Historical evidence suggests that humans also display this cycling behavior. Demographic patterns from countries all over the world show the same distinct rise and fall in growth rates, with human cycles typically lasting around 300 years. In the peak periods of the cycle, when fertility rates are high, people also appear to be more resistant to disease. On the other hand, trough periods are characterized by low fertility and death from illness becomes increasingly common. When animals cycle, it's not simply fertility rates and vulnerability to disease that change, it's also their attitudes towards territory and to each other. 
In the growth phase, they become more socially tolerant and group together in large numbers. However, in the trough period, they spread out and become more territorial. In human populations, these instincts are expressed politically. In the generation around the growth peak, patriotic sentiment tends to be strong and powerful central governments enjoy widespread support. On the other hand, in the years following the decline phase, local loyalties become much stronger and central authority often collapses. It should also be noted that the impact of lemming cycles varies greatly depending on a culture's level of development. So while a trough period may lead to anarchy in one century, a few cycles later, it may simply result in a swing towards more powerful local leaders. When looking at English history over the past thousand years, we can see strong evidence of lemming cycle patterns, which appear to have a profound impact on the social and political landscape. The War of the Roses provides a good example of what happens during the years following a trough period, 90 years before the peak of growth, when central authority breaks down and feudal chaos reigns. Looking back at the previous era, 16th century historian Edward Hall laments, What misery, what murder, and what execrable plagues this famous region hath suffered by the division and dissension of the renowned houses of Lancaster and York. For what noble man liveth at this day, or what gentleman of any ancient stock or progeny, whose lineage hath not been infested and plagued with this unnatural division? The powerful Tudor dynasty, on the other hand, is an example of the rapid consolidation of power that occurs in the period during and after the peak of growth. During this time, the population expanded rapidly and the central government became increasingly powerful and authoritative. This is a period of rapid economic development, exploration and national unification. All this, combined with an increased national feeling, contributed to the successful defence of England against the Spanish Armada. Demographic information is not always available, but remarkably similar political patterns can be seen in France, Japan, and even ancient Rome. In China, which boasts over 3,000 years of documented history, lemming cycles commonly express themselves as dynasties with a characteristic pattern of swift rise and slow decline. It is this periodic swing between chaos and unity that is the most striking feature of a lemming cycle pattern. The idea that the echo of a deep evolutionary impulse might impact our political and social behaviour is pretty radical. But it's difficult to see how else these patterns could exist all over the world, cycling at different times but with much the same frequency. So far we've covered the changes in political expression that occurred during both the peak and the trough phases of the cycle. However, one of the most dramatic points in the lemming cycle pattern can be found when the generation born at the peak of population growth reaches military age. Previously, we mentioned that during the migration phase, lemmings become bold and surge out in vast waves to colonise new lands. In people, this powerful migratory instinct leads to feelings of strong national unity, which often results in an outbreak of mass warfare. In muskrats and other animals, Local populations peak together, but more distant populations peak at different times. The same can be found in human history, with neighbouring nations reaching their peak periods decades or even centuries apart. In the modern era, the first Western nation to peak was France in the 1770s, which was preceded by the Revolution and Napoleonic Wars. Across the Atlantic, North America experienced two peaks, first in the north in 1820, and in the South in 1840, resulting in the Mexican-American War in 1846 and the Civil War in 1860. Britain reached its peak in the mid-19th century, followed by Germany in 1890, Russia and Austria around 1900. As such, the First World War could be seen as a result of multiple lemming cycle migration phases colliding in quick succession. So what does it feel like to live through this period of a lemming cycle? In all these cases, there was a build-up of patriotic fervour, and then, as the generation born at the peak reached maturity, an outbreak of war, or in the case of France and Russia, a violent revolution. People flocked to join armies or local militant groups, often starting wars against enemies with vastly greater resources. 
This is how a prominent German writer, Gabriel Ruter, described the mania prior to the outbreak of the First World War. A gigantic wave of fiery hot feeling passed through our country, flaming up like a beautiful sacrificial pyre. It was no longer a duty to offer oneself and one's life. It was supreme bliss. There is proof which is more genuine than words, than songs and cheers. That is the expression in the faces of the people. Their uncontrolled, spontaneous movements. I saw the eyes light up of an old woman who had sent four sons into battle and explained, it is glorious to be allowed to give the fatherland so much. After four years of fighting and millions of deaths, the desire for war had still not abated. Ernst Junger, an elite soldier and renowned author, described the passion of the German offensive of March 1918. The turmoil of our feeling was called forth by rage, alcohol and the thirst for blood as we stepped out, heavily and yet irresistibly, for the enemy's lines. And therewith beat the pulse of heroism, the godlike and the bestial inextricably mingled. I was boiling with a fury now utterly inconceivable to me. The overpowering desire to kill winged my feet. Rage squeezed bitter tears from my eyes. The First World War was fought as the war to end all wars. But if our interpretation is correct, it had the opposite effect. We've seen previously that infants who have anxious and stressed mothers grow up to be more aggressive. And there are few experiences more stressful than war. As such, the infants born at the end of the war produced a highly militant generation when they came of age in 1939. This led to a second European war more disastrous than the first, especially since the Japanese were now in their own migration phase. Whilst these echo wars often occur a generation after a violent migration period, they can, in fact, break out after any major war. When looking at 3,000 years of Chinese history, we see a consistent pattern of one major war followed by another a generation later. Like much of biohistory, lemming cycle theory is still in its infancy. Scientific study of rodent populations could help to unlock the mystery of how lemming cycles work and by doing so, further explain the biological underpinnings of society. For more information, go to our website or order the book from the link below.